Hello everyone, I'm Dr. Miruna Popescu. I'm a fourth year pathology resident. Welcome back to another video on genitourinary pathology. In this video, I'd like to briefly discuss a benign entity, namely prostatic type urethral polyps. Urethral polyps are uncommon benign polypoid or papillary lesions. They commonly occur on the posterior wall of the prostatic urethra in men. They affect patients on a wide age range. Usually they occur in adults, but they can sometimes be seen in children. So they're not completely out of the diagnostic picture. If you get a case of a polypoid lesion um, occurring, occurring in the urethra of a child, patients typically present with um, hematuria and or dysuria, which usually leads to urethroscopy resection of the papillary lesion and histopathological diagnosis. There are two types of urethral polyps, the prostatic type urethral polyp, which I'm going to discuss in this video, and the fibroepithelial urethral polyp, which I'll reserve for another video. Of course, there are a number of other um, lesions which may present as polypoid masses in the urethra. One of them is the caruncle, it exclusively occurs in women. It presents as a polypoid mass protruding from the external meatus. It is a reactive lesion consisting of fibrostroma with invaginated urethelial nests resembling urethritis cystica and glandularis. It usually has lots of chronic inflammation, dilated vessels, and edema. Uh, prolapse is another thing to consider. Nephrogenic adenomas although rarely occurring in the urethra may be seen, they resemble bladder nephrogenic adenomas in this location. Polypoid urethritis is another lesion to consider. Um, most importantly, it doesn't show true fibrovascular course, and it usually shows marked mixed inflammation, acute and chronic, and prominent edema. Uh, urethral papillomas, um, resemble bladder papillomas and are also to be considered in the differential diagnosis, as well as um, tumors of other natures, for example, mesenchymal tumors. Um, the most common mesenchymal tumor of the urethra is the leiomyoma. And uh, important to consider is the fact that it almost exclusively occurs in women. Microscopically, prostatic type urethral polyps show delicate papillary fronds with true fibrovascular cores lined by benign prostatic epithelium with its typical dual cell population of luminal PSA positive cells and basal cells showing expression of basal cell markers such as high molecular ray cytokeratins or P63. Benign prostatic sinai are usually seen in the papillary cores and in the subjacent fibromuscular stroma and another thing that we usually see in these lesions are benign um, scattered urethelial cells intermixed with this prostatic epithelium that is lining the papillary structures. The urethelium is better highlighted using GANA3. The lesion is positive for NKX3.1, which is in keeping with its prostatic nature, and is negative for MACR. Let's see some examples. This is a low power view of a lesion which was described on the cystoscopy report as a small papillary mass protruding into the urethral lumen from the posterior wall. We see a fibromuscular stroma containing benign prostate glands with their typical undulating luminal contours, some intraluminal concretions or corpora amylacea. We see that the surface epithelium mostly resembles that of the prostatic glands and is covering um, delicate papillary projections with true fibrovascular pores. On a closer view, we notice there is also some intermixed benign urethelium focally, and we can better appreciate the papillary nature of the lesion. These delicate papillary fronds with these thin, true fibrovascular pores. Another thing to notice is that there is no prominent inflammation or edema in the subjacent stroma. Another area to highlight the benign prostatic epithelium lining this lesion, which is considered to be ectopic in nature, we can appreciate the dual cell population, the columnar luminal cells with their 
frothy, pale cytoplasm, and more purple, dark staining nuclei, as well as the compressed cells at the basement membrane, the basal cells, with their lighter staining slate gray colored nuclei. Another image showing slender papillary projections lined by prostatic epithelium and the subjacent fibromuscular, uh, fibromuscular stroma containing benign prostate glands with minimal, if any, surrounding inflammation or edema. This contrasts, for example, with fibroepithelial urethral polyps, which in their most common histological variant show broad clover leaf like projections covered by urethelium which frequently invaginates into the subjacent stroma, forming cystically dilated nests resembling glandular structures. And of course, there is no prostatic epithelium in a fibro um, epithelial urethral polyp. Another differential to consider is papillary urethritis, as we mentioned, which apart from the fact that it shows a purely urethral lining, would also show more prominent inflammation and edema both of which are usually scarce in a prostatic type urethral polyp as seen in this um, image. Let's see some stains. PSA, or NKX 3.1 if you prefer, uh, will beautifully highlight the prostatic nature of the epithelium lining these lesions. But actually, you don't need to perform stains on this lesion. This is a purely histomorphological diagnosis. Stains were made in this case just for illustrative purposes. But if you do them, PSA will nicely highlight the luminal cells of the prostatic epithelium. If you perform basal cell markers, such as high molecular weight cytokeratin or P63, or a combination of both, as in this case, this will show a retained basal cell layer in this case, in a beautifully continuous fashion, highlighting the benign nature of the prostatic epithelium lining these lesions. MACR is typically completely negative in these lesions, and GATA3 usually highlights some, sometimes more, sometimes less, scattered um, benign urethelial cells in these lesions. Here and there, some urethelial cells. Here's another example um, of a prostatic type urethral polyp just for illustrative purposes. A papillary lesion with showing true delicate fibrovascular cores lined by benign prostatic epithelium. Uh, in the subjacent fibromuscular stroma, we see lots of benign prostatic glands. And in this particular example, there is a bit more edema than in the previous um, case I just showed you, but there again, there is no prominent um, inflammation. On a closer view, um, again, the papillary nature of the lesion with true slender, so delicate fibrovascular cores lined by prostatic epithelium, also the benign prostate glands in the subjacent fibromuscular stroma, a bit more, a bit more edema in this example, but nothing dramatically and no prominent inflammation. And again, benign prostate glands in the subjacent stroma with some intraluminal concretions and benign prostate epithelium lining um, delicate uh, papillary projections with true fibrovascular cores. Some stains, again, PSA, beautifully highlighting the uh, luminal cells of the prostatic epithelium. A combination of CK5 and P63 labeling the retained basal cell layer in a continuous fashion, highlighting the benign nature of the prostatic epithelium lining these lesions. MACR dead negative again. And gata showing, at least in this example, a bit more um, intermixed uh, urethelium with this uh, benign prostatic epithelium. If you've enjoyed the video, I've got lots of other pathology educational material that you might like on Twitter at Miruna Popescu13 and on Kiko. Um, the link leads to my organized list of cases based on subspecialty. I have lots of images, virtual slides, short summaries, even quizzes. So um, please consider subscribing and most importantly, keep on learning.
Have a great day.